session is called to order. May we request Sheikh Abdul Wahab back to re- lead us in the invocation and please remain standing for the national anthem and the Bangsamoro hymn. Mga kababayan, ang pambansang awit ng Pilipinas. Ayang magiging pero sa sinahalan, alam ng puso sa titik mo ibuhay. Upang hinihinaw, tuyat na ng magiging sa mandulupin, di ka pasisigil sa nagatang tutok sa sibuyan. Sa langit ko bangaw, ay hinagang tulakaw. 
the Secretary General please proceed with the roll call. The members of the BTA Parliament, the Honorables Abbas Akbar, Abbas Haron, Present. Abbas Zulkanay. Present. Abbas Basit Sarip. Abu Majid. Adiyong Jao Rahman Alonto. Ahang Abdullah. Alamia Laisa. Present. Alaw Deb Faiz. Ali Ibrahim. Ali Lanang Jr. Ali Edi Mapag, Alil Cesar, Amboloto Suarto, Ampatuan Bayintan, Anayatin Susana, Asmawil Muslima, Balindong Ali Pangalian, Bara Hamid Aminuddin, Basman Anna Tarhata, Burahan Abraham. Present. Dandao Bay Maleha. Present po. Dandap, Dandamo Latip Maysara. Diamla Musa. Dipatuan Saprula. Ibrahim Ahod. Ismail Haji Abdullah Jis. Gaya Abdullah. Gera Edward. Asim Abdullah. Present. Asana Timil. Iqbal Mohager. Ismail Rasul. Raisa. Jaquilan Muslimin. Present. Jikiri Al-Bakil. Present. Present. Present po. Present po, Lisa San. Lorena Jose Ribani. Makako Abdurao. Makapaar Abdula. Present. Makaraya Jamil. Makasalo Marjani. Mangoda Dato Dato Kadafe. Mantawil Malik. Mastura Dato Tokaw. Mastura Siti Sihara. Mawali Lamil Bahar. Mitimbang Dato Midpantaw. Mitmog Rasul. Mujahid Abdul Muhmin. Munoz Hussein. Oranon Suhaib. Hussein. Pakasa Mubayda. Pak Abdullah Hab, Pangandama Nabila Margarita, Present, Ramos Jamila, Rimbang Sultan Edrisa Nasir, Sakar Mudayaw, Present, Selendab Said, Sali Al Said, Saliga Romeo, Salik Ali. Sangki Ali, Sani Punduma, Satar Al-Sad, Sema Omar Yasser, Sema Romeo, Sheikh Said, Silonga Naida, Present, Sulaiman Ali, Tago Paisalin, Han Nabil, Present. Uja Sahi. Ulama Milanio. Usman Aspar. Yaakob Muhammad. UAK Narciso. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Magdini Nasa. Assalamu alaikum. Sir Speaker, with 31 members of the parliament physically responded to the call and 23 responded via Zoom, we have a total of 54 members of the parliament responded both physical and virtual. We therefore certify, Mr. Speaker, that there is the presence of forum. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. With the 
attendance of 54 members of the BTA both physically and virtually, and with the certification of the Secretary General as to the existence of a quorum, we are good to go for today's uh, plenary session. Majority Floor Leader. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Honorable Speaker Ali Pangalian Balindong. Honorable Deputy Speaker Attorney Omar Sema. Honorable Members of the Bangsamoro Transition Authority Parliament. Members of the Secretariat, visitors, guests, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Mr. Speaker, we are now on item number six, reading in approval of journal of the previous session, journal number 69, September 14, 2021 session. Mr. Speaker, I move to dispense with the reading of the journal of the previous session, and I further move for the approval of the said, Mr. Speaker. There is a motion for to dispense with the reading of the pre, uh, journal of the previous session and a further motion for the approval of the same. Is there any second? It's been seconded, there being no objection. The reading of the journal is dispensed and at the same time approved. <coughs> Mr. Speaker, we are now on item number seven, the resolutions. May we request the Secretary General to read the first proposed resolution for today's session, including the title and the authors, Mr. Speaker. The Secretariat is... Uh, Directed to read proposed resolution number 377, the title of the proposed resolution number 377, including the name of the authors and co authors. Mr. Speaker, proposed resolution number 377, entitled Resolution Requiring Mandatory Submission of At Least Rapid Antigen Test Results for Members of the Parliament, their staff, guests, and visitors entering the BTA session hall during parliamentary session to prevent the spread of coronavirus disease 2019 or COVID-19. Authored by the Honorable Members of the Parliament, Bintan A. Ampatuan and Amil Bahar S. Mawadil, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I move to refer this to the Committee on Rules. There's a motion to refer proposed resolution number 377 to the Committee on Rules. There any second? There being no objection. John, proposed resolution number 377 is referred to the committee on rules. May we request the Secretary General to read the next proposed resolution, Mr. Speaker? The Secretary General is directed to read the title and uh, the title of the next proposed resolution and including the name of the authors and co-authors. On second proposed resolution, Mr. Speaker, is re proposed resolution number 563 entitled Resolution Urging the Government of the Day to Establish a Bangsamoro complaint center and hotline, thereby localizing the executive order number 06 series of 2016 as part of the grievance mechanism of the Bangsamoro government. Authored by the Honorable Members of the Parliament, Bintan A. Ampatuan, Laisa M. Alamia, Amil Bahar S. Mawadil, Rasul Y. Mitmog Jr., Suharto M. Ambuludo, Don Mustafa A. Luong, and Rasul E. Ismail, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I move to repair this to the Committee on Rules. There's a motion to refer proposed resolution number 577 to 563. the Committee on Rules. 563, Mr. Speaker. Committee on Rules. Yes, 563. Uh, 563, I'm sorry. 563. Yes, Mr. Speaker. Is there any second? There being no objection, proposed resolution number 563 is referred to the Committee on Rules. May we request the Secretary General to read the next proposed resolution, Mr. Speaker. The Secretary General is directed to read the title of the next proposed resolution, including the name of the authors and co-authors. Mr. Speaker, on proposed resolution number 577, is entitled Resolution Supporting the Policy of the Office of the Chief Minister, OCM, for the representations of the Bangsamoro in the affairs of the national government through its agencies and offices, as ordained by the Bangsamoro Organic Law. Authored by the Honorable Members of the Parliament, Maintan A. Ampatuan and Amil Bahar S. Mawali. Co-authored by the Honorable Members of the Parliament, Liza M. Alamia, Rasul Y. Mitmog Jr., Suharto M. Ambuludu, Don Mustafa A. Luong, and Rasul E. Ismail, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I move to refer this to the Committee on Rules. There's a motion to refer proposed resolution number 577 to the Committee on Rules. There is a second. There being objection, proposed resolution number 577 is referred to the Committee on Rules. May we request the Secretary General to read the next proposed resolution, Mr. Speaker? The Secretary General is directed to read the title of the next proposed resolution, including the name of the authors and co-authors. 
Mr. So Speaker, on the next proposed resolution is proposed resolution number 580, entitled Resolution Requesting the Bangsamoro Darul Ifta and the National Commission on Muslim Filipinos to institutionalize mechanisms of coordinations for the purpose, purposes of synchronizing the proclamations of Muslim legal holidays under Presidential Decree Number 1083. Authored by the Honorable Members of the Parliament, Bayintan A. Ampatuan and Amil Bahar S. Mawalim. Co-authored by the Honorable Members of the Parliament, Liza M. Adamia, Rasul Y. Mitmog Jr., Suharto M. Ambuludo, Don Mustafa A. Luong, and Rasul E. Ismail, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I move to repair this to the Committee on Rules. There's a motion to refer proposed resolution number 580 5 to the Committee on Rules. There are in the second. There being no objection, proposed resolution number 580 is referred to the Committee on Rules. May we request the Secretary to read the next proposed resolution, Mr. Speaker? The Secretary John is directed to read the title of the next proposed resolution, including the name of the authors and co-authors. Mr. Speaker, on proposed resolution number 631 is entitled, Resolution urging the government of the date to formulate strategies and an incentives mechanism that will encourage the vaccine hesitant population in the Bangsamoro region to get vaccinated. Authored by the Honorable Member of the Parliament, Bayintan A. Ampatuan. Co-authored by the Honorable Members of the Parliament, Laysa M. Alamia, Amil Bahar S. Mawalil, Rasul Y. Mitmog Jr., Suharto M. Ambuludo, Don Mustafa A. Luong, and Rasul E. Ismail, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I move to treat this as simple resolution and be transferred for the basis of the day. There's a motion to refer, there is a motion to treat proposed resolution number 631 as simple resolutions during the second. There being no objection, proposed resolution number 631 is treated as simple resolution be transferred to the business for the day. Mr. Speaker, may we request the Secretary General to read the next proposed resolution? The Secretary General is directed to read the title of the next proposed resolution. Mr. Speaker, on proposed resolution number 632 is entitled Resolution Urging the Government of the Day through the Ministry of the Interior and the Local Government, MILG, the Bangsamoro Planning and Development Office, BPDA, and the Ministry of Science and Technology, MOST, to encourage the line agencies and local government units to undertake proactive measures on disaster risk reductions and management, especially on recovery and rehabilitation. Authored by the Honorable Member of the Parliament, Bayintan A. Ambatuan, co-authored by the Honorable Members of the Parliament, Liza M. Alamia, Amil Bahar S. Mawalil, Rasul Y. Mitmog Jr., Suharto M. Ambuludo, Don Mustafa A. Luong, and Rasul E. Ismail, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I move to treat this as simple resolution and be transferred for the business of the day. There's a motion to, re to treat proposed resolution number 63 to a simple resolution. Is there any second? It's been seconded. Proposed resolution number 632 is treated as simple resolution and transferred to the business for the day. May we request the Secretary General to read the next proposed resolution, Mr. Speaker? The Secretary General is directed to read the title of the next proposed resolution, including the name of the authors and co-authors. Mr. Speaker, proposed resolution number 636 is entitled Resolution Commending and Honoring the Late by Fatima Palaleo Sinsuat for the invaluable service she has rendered to the Bangsamoro and the country. Authored by Honorable Member of the Parliament, Susana S. Anayatin, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I move to treat this as simple resolution and be transferred for the business of the day. There is a motion to refer uh, to treat proposed resolution number 636 as simple resolution. Is there any second? Been seconded. Proposed resolution number 636 is treated as simple resolution and transferred to the business for the day. May we request the Secretary General to read the next proposed resolution, Mr. Speaker? The Secretary General is, General is directed to read the title of the next proposed resolution. So speaker, on proposed resolution number 637 is entitled Resolution commending and congratulating the 24 local government units of the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao for qualifying as most competitive LGUs 
of the region in the 2021 cities and municipalities competitiveness index of the national competitiveness council authored by the honorable member of the parliament Zayu Rahman Alonto Ajong, co-authored by the Honorable Members of the Parliament, Ana Tarhata S. Basman, Raisa H. Jajuri, and Ubaida C. Pakasa, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I move to treat this as simple resolution and be transferred for the business of the day. There is a motion to, to treat proposed resolution number 637 as a simple resolution. Any second? Yes. It's been seconded. There being no objection, proposed resolution number 637 is uh, treated as simple resolution and transferred to the business for the day. Mr. Speaker, we are now on item number eight, first stage of bills. May we request the Secretary General to read the first proposed Parliament bill for today's session, including the title and the authors. The Secretary General is directed to read the title of BTA Parliament, uh, proposed BTA Parliament Bill number 169, including the name of the authors and co-authors. Mr. Speaker, BTA Parliament Bill number 169 is entitled, An Act Requiring the Mandatory Social Preparation of Development Projects in the Bangsamoro Region. Authored by the Honorable Member of the Parliament, Bintan A. Ampatuan, Authored by the Honorable Members of the Parliament, Laisa M. Alamia, Amil Bahar S. Mawalil, Rasul Y. Mitmuk Jr., Suharto M. Ambuludu, Don Mustafa E. Luong, and Rasul E. Ismail, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, this is a private member bill. So any members of the Parliament would like to be co-authors of this particular bill, they may fill up the co-authorship uh, form distributed before this session, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, may we now request the Secretary General to read the next proposed Parliament bill for today's session. Secretary General is directed to read the title of proposed BTA Parliament Bill number 170, including the name of the authors and co-authors. BTA Parliament Bill number 170, Mr. Speaker, is entitled, An Act re Renaming the Sanga Sanga Airport, Bungao Province of Tawi-Tawi, as the Tawi-Tawi Airport. Authored by the Honorable Members of the Parliament, Jose I. Lorena, Amil Bahar S. Mawalil, and al Shaid A. Sagi. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, this is a private member bill. Any members of the Parliament would like to be co-authors, just fill up the co-authorship speech, the co-authorship form distributed before this session, Mr. Speaker. May we request the Secretary to read the next proposed Parliament bill for today's session, Mr. Speaker. The Secretary General is directed to read the title of uh, proposed BTA Parliament Bill number 171, including the name of the authors and co-authors. Mr. Speaker, BTA Parliament Bill number 171 is entitled, An Act Authorizing Annual Ramadan Economic Assistance and Relief to Bangsamoro Government Officials and Employees. Authored by the Honorable Member of the Parliament, Omar Yasser C. Sema. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, this is a private member bill. Any members of the parliament would like to be co-authors, just fill up the co-authorship speech because co-authorship is form distributed before this session, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we are now on item number 12, business for the day. The first resolution under consideration for the business of the day is the proposed resolution number 631 entitled Resolution Urging the Government of the Day to Formulate Strategies and an incentives mechanisms that will encourage the vaccinate hesitant population in the Bangsamoro region to get vaccinated. In this uh, line, Mr. Speaker, may we respectfully recognize MP Bayintana Patuan to give initial speech on this particular resolution. Mr. The Speaker. lady from Maguindano is recognized. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Peace be upon to all of you. To the Speaker, members of this Parliament, the Secretariat, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. We, the members of this August Parliament, are responsible for the health of our constituents. We are mandated by the organic law as part of the Bangsamoro government to promote the health and safety of our inhabitants under Article 5, Section 3 of the BOL. More than that, we are tasked to provide 
maintain and ensure the delivery of basic and responsive health programs to the inhabitants of the Bangsamoro region under Article 9, Section 8 of the BOL. As of date, we have almost 4 million cases of COVID-19, and this number just keeps on growing. Despite the significant number of recoveries, we cannot in undervalue the number of lives taken by this pandemic. Every day, four to 8,000 Filipinos are reported to be infected with the virus. We should, not take, we should take note that these are only for people who have actually been tested. We do not know about those who might be experiencing symptoms but have not, been, have not had the opportunity to check if they are positive or not. Ladies and gentlemen, I ask of you, how do we keep up? How do we get through this? And what can we do for our people? My dear colleagues, this is why we have to be vaccinated. We have to get our constituents vaccinated too. Vaccine ex uh, hesitancy was identified in recent years by the World Health Organization as one of the top 10 threats to public health. Public health. In the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic, this, the issue has become even more salient with uh, several vaccines through available, yet in many concerns and much hesitancy surrounding this new disease and new technology. There are so many debates between the vaccinated and the anti-vaxxers. However, if we just do our in-depth research, it can easily be seen the vaccination is our best bet against this pandemic. Many of our constituents are hesitant and adamant to get the vaccine because of the spread of fake news that they are unsafe and can lead to death because they are only experimental. However, we have to remind them that these vaccines have undergone through a lot of phases and tests even before they have been released to the public. Furthermore, a lot of studies show that vaccinated people are less likely to be infected harshly by the virus, thus reducing the likelihood of death. For instance, let me read to you an excerpt from, the, from an article by the Center of Disease Control and Prevention Center. Reports of deaths after COVID-19 vaccinations are rare. FDA even requires healthcare providers to report any death after COVID-19 vaccination, even if it's unclear whether the vaccine was the cause. Reports of the adverse events following the vaccination, including deaths, do not necessarily mean that the vaccine cause caused a health problem. We could stand here all day thinking about the legitimacy of the vaccines, but most legitimate sources will tell you that it is our best bet against this pandemic. Our collective goal is to put a halt to this pandemic and to achieve herd immunity by vaccination. That at least 70% to 85% of the population needs to be vaccinated. However, as of January 23, 2022, the Bangsamoro region ranks the lowest among all regions in the Philippines in terms of total doses administered. Data as of January 23, 2022 showed that the vaccination in the BARM lagged at least 25.22% for the fully vaccinated and at least 26 or at 26.59% for the partially vaccinated, while the rest of the regions have a full vaccination rate of more than 50%. 
President Rodrigo Roa Duterte expressed his desire for Muslim community leaders in Mindanao for us here in this room to encourage our constituents to get themselves vaccinated against the COVID-19 pandemic. We need to encourage individuals to receive the recommended immunizations. Thus, we need to do a reasonable means to get them vaccinated. One of them being incentivization. incentivization. We will not be the first to do this. In fact, other countries have done the same too. All over the world, wide arrays of incentives were offered and are still being offered by the authorities and companies to win the vaccine hesitant as they seek to turn a page on the pandemic. To cite some examples internationally, Moscow authorities handed about five cars a week in a price drone for the vaccinated. Loan donors got the chance to win tickets for the final of the Euro 2020 Soccer Championship. In Lebanon, pre-overrides were given to and from vaccination centers. In Malaysia, uh, uh, all Malaysia uh, an all-Malaysian effort was launched by the government and the businesses. Businesses, lawmakers, roll out perks for COVID-19 vaccination, such as cash incentives, lucky draws, and burger vouchers, were given out, of, out to encourage people to register for their shots. Locally, residents from Las Piñas, Las Piñas City stood a chance to win a house, motorcycles, and even groceries if they receive at least one dose of COVID vaccine. And 20 people in Sukat, Manila, stood the chance to take home a 25 kilogram sack of, a sack of rice every week if they get their shots. Hence, the Bangsamoro government too can incentivize the Bangsamoro people, people who refuse or are still undecided to be vaccinated in order to encourage them to get their job. Moreover, more than incentivization, according to U.S. National Library of Med Medicine National Institutes of Health, the World Health Organization recently published guidelines for developing a proactive COVID vaccination strategy, which include, includes behavioral change planning, audience targeting, analysis of barriers, mobilization, building vaccine demand, community engagement, access to vaccines, marketing strategy, media out outreach, and digital media strategy, which were combined are likely to lead more effective vaccination campaign. It is important to identify which group are reticent to vaccinate and examine their reasons. In fact, according to National Geographic in the United States, outreach programs from most community organizations and cultural centers that work with the immigrant communities are helping uh, dispel information and promote vaccination. Perhaps we can do the same things here in the Bangsamoro region by conducting studies in the communities and understanding their reasons and correct some false beliefs and by seeking the help of our religious leaders to decrease hesitancy. We now have sufficient access to vaccines, but some of our fellow men are just hesitant, unconcerned, poorly rich, and are just active resistors. Thus, I urge this parliament and the appropriate offices to come up with their other strategies to incentivize our constituents to be vaccinated. Increasing vaccination uptake is crucial to establish herd immunity in order to stop the coronavirus pandemic. Given all of this, I implore this just parliament to pass and approve this resolution urging the government of the day 
to formulate strategies and incentivize uh, in incentive mechanism that will encourage uh, hesitant uh, the vaccine vaccine hesitant population in the Bangsamburu region to get vaccinated. Sukran wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. Mr. Speaker, I move to open the period of interpolation and debate. The period of interpolation and debate is now open. May we respectfully recognize MPAD Ali, Mr. Speaker. The gentleman from Tawi Tawi is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Majority floor leader. May I know if the proponent would like would accede to some clarificatory questions? Yes, Mr. Speaker. At the outset, Mr. Speaker, I would like to to manifest for my inclusion to be a member of uh, to be a co-author of this resolution. Yes, uh, uh, the the uh, intention to being part of the co-authorship is accepted. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Una po, gusto ko lang magtanong kung mayroon pong tayong data tungkol sa rate of vaccinated persons versus populations in the Bangsamoro. Um, Mr. Speaker, um, what was uh, published in the news is that uh, the BARM lagged at 25.2% for fully vaccinated and 26.59% uh, for the partially vaccinated as of January 2022 as compared to more than 50% in other administrative regions, uh, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, sa pagkaalam ko rin po, and I think uh, nabasa ko rin po ang impormasyon na to, sa BARM area po, sa BARM provinces, tawi-tawi po ang pinakamataas na vaccinated individuals versus its population. At uh, may dalawang provinces sunod doon po. Hindi ko lang maalaala kung kasama ang Sulu no? at Basilan. I think the island provinces, Mr. Speaker, uh, yung tatlong island provinces composing the BARM, sila po ang nangunguna sa pinakamataas na vaccinated individuals uh, sa ating, sa, sa BARM. Uh, gusto, lang, gusto ko lang po malaman, kasi uh, nabasa ko rin po, medyo mababa ang vaccinated uh, individuals dito sa Lanao, sa Lanao del Sur. Uh, Gusto ko po itanong, Mr. Speaker, kung may idea po ang proponent natin kung ano po ang mga rason bakit po alanganin ang mga tao to be vaccinated. Well, um, Mr. Speaker, um, I think for some major reasons, uh, I think it has something to do with their beliefs. Um, either associated with the religion or associated with their personal beliefs, uh, Mr. Speaker. Uh, one, um, some are saying that, uh, although this is not the, the claim of many, that uh, this vaccine is not halal. And second, uh, on a personal belief, uh, they say that uh, uh, these uh, vaccines are not tested and uh, it's dangerous uh, to one's body, Mr. Speaker. And uh, I think this is not just uh, common to us in the Bangsamoro. It is common all over the world and even in the Muslim countries, Mr. Speaker. Gusto ko rin po malaman, Mr. Speaker, ang mga sa island provinces po ay mga Muslim din po kung relihiyon po ang pinag-uusapan. Uh, bakit po mas mataas doon at tatanggap ba ng mga Muslim sa Basilan, Sulu at Tawi-Tawi ang vaccination na to, pero hindi naman po natatanggap 
uh, ng karamihan no sa ibang probinsya ng 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 Balm. Uh, maliban po doon sa personal belief o kaya religious belief. Wala po bang kakulangan Mr. Speaker yung mga taong o yung mga opisyales o yung ministries na atasan na tungkol sa vaccination program natin. Baka po may kakulangan, yun po ang tanong ko Mr. Speaker, kung may kakulangan po ang mga ang mga officers o kaya ministries dito po sa sa sabihin natin in explaining to the people, no? Baka hindi lang po tungkol sa relihiyon, hindi lang po tungkol sa personal belief, pero tungkol din po sa kakulangan sa ating side po, no? yung mga government offices po. Gusto ko lang po malaman. Kasi if the Muslims in Tawi-Tawi, Sulu, and Basilan ay nakakatanggap ng vaccination, bakit ang ibang munisipalidad, ang ibang probinsya ay hindi? Uh, kaya ang naisip ko rin po, Mr. Speaker, baka may kakulangan naman sa dissemination tungkol dito or more explanation galing sa mga kinaukulan po. Uh, Mr. Speaker, can I answer? Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, the, the mere fact, I, and I'm not here to say that uh, if the concerned ministries and officers have uh, some gaps in the implementation of their um, functions with regards to the vaccination program, but um, the outcome says that uh, we lag behind uh, as compared to other regions. And uh, no less than the president called the attention or uh, have a public uh, uh, message about uh, the uh, um, status of our vaccination in the Bangsamoro region. So that alone calls our attention, being members of the parliament, to really push our concerned ministries and offices to look at some strategies. And in fact, in my message earlier, I have cited some uh, strategies that, uh, that are being recommended by the World Health Organization. And uh, I also mentioned about the incentivization uh, uh, initiatives uh, undertaken by other countries as well as other LGUs in the Philippines. Um, I think this is high time for us to really step up, whether kung may pagkukulang or wala, Pero siguradong kailangan nating itaas yung uh, ating rate ng vaccination dahil napakababa, nahila yung buong Pilipinas ng BARM pagdating dito sa resulta ng vaccination sa ating region. And that's why we are calling the uh, concerned ministries and offices to come up with the strategies and perhaps incentives to the uh, vaccine-hesitant population, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, naniniwala po ako no, sa explanation ng ating proponent. Um, ang isang nakikita ko, Mr. Speaker, kung malaman po natin, kung malapan po natin yung rason, I'm more concerned po in addressing the reasons. Kasi pag... Pag nakita po natin yung mga rason kung bakit ayaw ng tao, then the, ins- the, then the, then the solution, no? baka niya, hindi po pare-pareho. Kaya nga, uh, kaya nga uh, Mr. Speaker, nagtatanong ako kung ano yung mga posibleng rason. Para doon po sa mga rason na to magkakaroon po tayo ng mas uh, maayos na uh, solusyon. Uh, lastly po, Mr. Speaker, w- ang ating proponent po ay mentions, mention about giving incentives. Gusto ko lang po malaman sa in coming up with this, re- with this resolution na may, mayroon, po, mayroon po ba kayo, uh, Mr. Speaker, na suggested no i'm now going to you have mentioned mr speaker kung ano yung mga ginagawang incentive sa mga ibang lugar sa mga ibang countries pero being in the barn being in the barn 
Meron po ba tayong naisip na anong incentives na mayroon? Because I'm, I'm made to believe that with this resolution, eh, mayroon na po tayong agam-agam, mayroon na po tayong kaalaman kung bakit ang tao ay ayaw. So gusto ko lang po malaman, Mr. Speaker, kung mayroon, po tayong mang, kung mayroon na po tayong naisip as a recommendation to the government of the day kung ano po itong mga incentives na to. Maraming salamat po, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. May I answer, Mr. Speaker? Yeah, you um, may respond. I think uh, we need not think of many things. In fact, uh, what can be done is to tie up the incentivization with the current programs of uh, the ministries and offices. For example, uh, we have the Tabang, or we have the uh, uh, outreach programs for the ministries and uh, offices. Uh, we can tie up this with the uh, incentivization for those vaccine, uh, ano, vaccine hesitant population. Um, kung nagbibigay man lang din tayo ng bigas, no, randomly to some barangays, why don't we tie up it with the current uh, vaccination uh, program that we are have that we have? So uh, there are many ways of doing this, man. And I think, uh, pwede namang hindi siyang expensive, no? Um, but what is very important is we need to communicate to the people who don't who don't really understand ano yung importance ng vaccination. I, I believe that maraming hindi pa nakakaintindi ito, lalong-lalo na yung mga nasa liblib na lugar. So kailangan talagang, kung kailangan magdagdag ng tao as part of the strategy doon sa MOS, baka kailangan niyang mag-reach out doon sa mga LGUs no? para tumulong na rin na mag-explain dito sa ating vaccination program. So, uh, many ways of doing this, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Proponent. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. George Mr. Florida. Speaker, may we respectfully Mr. request MP, Deputy Minister uh, Sulkan and Abbas for being the Deputy Minister of MOH, Mr. Speaker. He will, in, he will interpolate. Yes, Mr. Speaker, in Zoom. The gentleman from that audience is what is recognized. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, I would just like to uh, add to the um, explanations being given and also to also shed light on the issues being raised by MP Ali. Um, first, um, yes, we have only 24.75% uh, vaccination rate. No? So yung, lahat po ng, yung coverage po natin for the whole barm, the total is just 24.72% to be exact actually as of today, you know. Um, the highest is uh, in Tawi-Tawi with uh, 39.98%. Um, second is uh, Basilan with 27.79%. Then third is Sulu, uh, uh, Magindana with 24.68%. Then Sulu, 24.57%. And Lanao del Sur, 18.44%. So uh, from Tama po yung sabi ni MP Ali that uh, the highest rate of vaccination is found in uh, Tawi-Tawi no, with 39.98, almost 40%. Um, now, yung problem po namin actually is uh, tama po yung vaccine hesitancy. That is why I really po welcome this initiative, this uh, bill being filed by uh, the Honorable MP Bintan Ampatuan. Um, kami po ay... Uh, in acknowledge po namin yung problem na talagang there is really a problem of vaccine hesitancy in the uh, in the region actually in general no so uh, even in in uh, Tawi-Tawi hindi rin po sil- hindi, ba, hindi po kami umabot ng 50% uh, doon so uh, we attribute this actually uh, doon po sa mga kumalat noon na mga fake news I think those fake news um, talagang tumatak po siguro sa uh, isipan ng ating mga tao and we really um, try to combat it. No? So um, communication wise, we have uh, provincial and the regional uh, initiatives po na, uh, to combat it via communication. We have uh, radio programs uh, dito po sa Cotabati City and Magindano meron tayo and other um, and other provinces meron din po even Lanao have their own uh, programs uh, regular programs po to um, address this no 
Um, we even partnered with uh, the the Muslim religious leaders. In fact, nung nag-launching uh, po tayo, nung, uh, anong nag-celebrate tayo nung third uh, anniversary po, uh, 200 plus sa Muslim religious leaders, ulama po ito lahat, nagpabakuna po ito sa uh, dito po sa Maguindano, specifically po dito sa Cotabato City, para ipakita natin na uh, um, uh, para to combat na rin no? yung uh, mga fake news na kumagkalat na kasi may laman ito na hindi maganda. But then, uh, yun din yung uh, challenge po talaga natin. Uh, talagang tumatak siguro sa isipan ng mga uh, kababayan natin yung mga fake news na kumalat po noon. Um, we noticed that uh, nung nagkaroon po tayo ng National Vaccination Day, yung ayuda po from Barm Ready and MSWD, uh, kasi nag-divide po kami ng mga areas, even those areas po na meron pong ayuda, like for example, dumaan po ako sa Gindulungan. No? So uh, nung nag-monitor ako, um, I went to uh, Gindulungan, OP, South OP, and uh, DBS. So pagdaan ko po dito sa Magindanao, nung dumaan po ako sa Gindulungan, nandoon po yung 25 kilos ng uh, Barm Ready. And MSWD is nandoon din yung uh, ayuda, no? In other regions, yung mga 5 to 10 kilos, pinagpipilahan po yan. Dito sa atin, even with 25 kilos and 10 kilos ayuda combined, wala pong nag-a-avail masyado. Um, yun yung naging kuha natin. So I think this is a challenge and uh, we really welcome po this uh, uh, this bill po. So um, uh, other than that, uh, meron din po tayong mga uh, na-hire din ng mga vaccinators to also help us disseminate information. So uh, logistics-wise, manpower-wise, uh, hindi po tayo um, nagkukulang. No? So uh, yun lang talaga ang problem po talaga natin is yung vaccine hesitancy po ng ating mga kababayan. So yun po. Maraming salamat. Uh, yes, Mr. Speaker. May we respectfully recognize MP Paisalin Tago. The gentleman from Masyulan Ogilusur is recognized. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, it's an, uh, actually, this is not an interpel interpolation to the sponsor of the mission, Mr. Speaker. This is a region there to your, st to your statement that uh, yung dapat na strategy na gawin. I, as I can see, Mr. Speaker, Ang pinakamalaking sectors na makakatulong dito sa vaccination drive natin ay yung mga local government units. Kasi they are, on the, they are in the ground, sa grassroots, up to the barangay level, may mga barangay chairman. And it, it will be the local government chief executive that can persuade our people to have vaccination. Kasi kung hindi sila mag-cooperate, uh, again, ito, uh, I'm sorry to say, sa nakikita ko, it will be a failure. Kasi, for example, in Lanao del Sur, as I understand it, may mga, yung mga mayor mismo ang isitan magpabakuna. So how can you convince the people within, the, within that locality na magpabakuna? Eh, yung uh, pinaka-boost mismo dun sa munisipyo ang eh, magpabakuna. So that's the problem. So sa akin... Uh, one of the strategies that the MOS can do is talk to this local government chief executive and uh, they can uh, uh, information drive to their people up to the barangay level regarding this vaccination. Kasi napakababa talaga, less than 20% yata or less than 25% ang uh, nabakuna sa atin. We are the lowest in the entire archipelago. So, yun. Yun lang ang regender ko doon, uh, Mr. Speaker. Uh, dapat ang mga LG, uh, ang mga local government units, uh, chief executive ang manguna dito sa vaccination drive natin. Yun lang. Maraming salamat, Mr. Speaker. And uh, I am willing to be part of this uh, resolution, Mr. Speaker. Thank you yeah. very much. Yeah, accepted, Mr. Speaker. George, the floor leader. Yes, MP Uja, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Sukran, uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, Majority Floor Leader. Um, I just would like to give some manifestations, if I may be allowed. 
We have just uh, heard. Please, the, please make it brief. If that yes. is a manifestation, we have just heard that um, from the national yatap that Mindanao, specifically the Muslim-dominated areas, registered the lowest uh, percentage of uh, vaccinated population. And uh, we must be consistent with the national government program to increase this percentage. Secondly, uh, considering that we have a uh, huge uh, fund for uh, basic services, specifically for health services, then um, as well as we in the parliaments have as well uh, some amount of funds from our other operating expenses to uh, help our constituents, then I think we have many ways to um, be identified or to identify if only to help our constituents, respective constituents, to be vaccinated. My manifestation is that uh, I am very in favor of this um, resolution to be put to a playing field starting this uh, month and so on uh, by our respective uh, uh, by all of us and of course with the um, um, leadership of the government of the day through the MOH so that um, we will be remaining consistent with our national government policy on health uh, services. Thank you very much. And um, if I may be considered as one of the co-authors of this resolution, I am intending to. Thank you. Mr. Speaker, I move to close the period of interpolation and debate. There's a motion to terminate the period of interpolation debate. Yes, seconded, Mr. the period of interpolation debate is hereby terminated. Mr. Speaker, I move to open the period of amendment. Period of amendments now open. Mr. Speaker, I move to close the period of amendment. There is a motion to terminate the period of amendments been seconded. There being no objection. The period of amendment is now terminated. Mr. Speaker, I move for the adoption and approval of this proposed resolution number one uh, six three one, Mr. Speaker. Is a motion to approve proposed resolution number 631, subject to subject style. style. It's been seconded. There being no objection, proposed resolution number 631 is approved on plenary. Mr. Speaker, we proceed to proposed resolution number 63, entitled Resolution Encouraging the Government of the Day through the Minister of the Interior and Local Government, the Bank Summer Planning and Development Office, and the Minister of Science and Technology. To encourage the line agencies and local government units to undertake proactive measures on disaster risk reduction and management, especially on recovery and rehabilitation. In this aspect, Mr. Speaker, may we respectfully recognize the principal author, MP Bintan Patua, and to shade lights about this proposal. The resources. lady from Maguindana is recognized. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker and Majority Floor Leader. Um, Bismillah rahman rahim Again, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Mr. Speaker, members of this parliament, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. The 1997 Constitution and our own Bangsamoro, Orga Bangsamoro Organic Law places a heavy premium on the protection of the life, liberty, and property, and the promotion of the general welfare of the citizens of our country and our Bangsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao. It is also imp an important responsibility of the Bangsamoro government to preserve the comfort and convenience of its inhabitants. Moreover, under Article 5, Section 2, Paragraph S of our organic law, it is provided that one of the powers of the Bangsamoro government it, that, is that it shall exercise its authority over matters involving disaster risk reduction and management. This is because under Article 13, Section 7 of the BOM, the Bangsamoro government recognizes the importance of disaster risk reduction and management and climate change adaptation. All over the world, disaster risk reduction and management, or DRRM, has become a trend and not for superficial reasons, but for state sustainable and adaptive development. We have moved on from ban aid solutions and only responsive and after the fact solutions. Now, we have disaster risk reduction and management, which is integral to our development and emphasizes 
on the importance of risk-informed and risk-resilient environment. It is recognized internationally through three glo global policy frameworks and international agreements. A, the Sendai Framework for Disaster Risk Reduction, 2015 to 2030, the United Nations Agency 2030 for Sustainable Development, and the Paris Agreement with the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change. Moreover, at the regional level, the Association of Southeast Asian Nations Community has ratified the Agreement of Disaster Management and Emergency Response, or ADMIR, in support of the global policy frameworks. The Philippines is a signatory or party to these global policy frameworks and agreements, and it is committed to minimizing the loss of life and resources due to disasters. Given this, the Republic Act 10121, or the Philippine Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Act of 2010, was passed. The National Government's Department of Interior and Local Government, or DILG, even recognizes the enactment of RA-121 as saving laid the basis for a paradigm shift from a just disaster preparedness and response to DRRM. From this, we can derive the importance of the uh, that the national government's places on DRRM, which the effort to take concrete steps towards safe, safer, adaptive, and disaster resilient Filipino communities. We, the people of the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao, sadly are not exempted from disasters. In fact, we are the very vulnerable and prone to this, both natural and human-induced. We experience typhoons, earthquakes, landslides, among others, as well as human-induced calamities by way of extremist military groups like the Abu Sayyaf and the Bangsamoro Islamic Freedom Fighters. Having said all of this, DRRM is one of the ways that we can secure the general welfare and future of the Bangsamoro people and should thus be one of our priorities as well as the priority of our line agencies and LGUs. Thus, a proactive measure on such, especially on recovery and rehabilita rehabilitation, should be given focus. One such proactive measure is the participation in the Ready to Rebuild Disaster Rehabilitation and Recovery Program, which is, which is a joint program of the National Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Council, Office of the Civil Defense, or NDRRMC, OCD, and the World Bank to help the national and local governments prepare for, uh, prepare for recovery even before disasters happen. It, it covers pre- and post-disaster activities from gathering disaster data, formulating a rehabilitation and recovery plan, and its subsequent financing, finance, financing and implementation, facilitating emergency procurement, crafting a communication strategy, and instituting monitoring and evaluation mechanisms. It will simulate the disaster rehabilitation and recovery planning process even before a disaster happens. The conduct of, this, of its activities will contribute to expediting the recovery planning and implementation processes. With such preparation, in, uh, with such participation in such program, the appropriate agencies and LGUs will have the technical know-how and will be able to effectively prepare a recovery and rehabilitation plan using the standard guidelines. Also, a worth mentioning is JURIS Philippines or JURIS PS, which is a multi-agency initiative led by the Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology, or PBOX, funded by the Departments of Science and Technology and monitored by the Philippine Council for Industry, Energy, and Emerging Technology Research and Development of PSERD from 2018 to 2020. Thus, an engagement with the national government's DOST on the use of GeoRace PX platforms should be done in order to build and manage the agencies or local government's geospatial data for climate and disaster resilience. DRR, DRRM planning and land use planning. 
It is imperative that we put disaster reduction and management as one of our priorities, given that our region is prone to natural and human induced calamities as discussed. Thus, I humbly ask for this parliament to pass and approve this proposed legislative measure. Thank you and wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Mr. Speaker, I move to open the period of interpolation and debate. The period of interpolation and debate is now open. MP Romeo Saliga, Mrs. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Just one important question to the proponent, uh, if she is uh, willing to respond, Mr. Yes, Speaker. Yes, of course, Mr. Speaker. Yes, I, I see we are in, in, uh, urging the government of the day to the MILG, BPDA and MOST and the line agencies within BARM. Uh, I just want to clarify with the proponent if she has... Uh, consulted this land agency if, if their uh, disaster risk reduction management are not proactive? Um, Mr. Speaker, right now we're talking about um, the main issue here is on recovery and rehabilitation, uh, yes, um, yes. Mr. Speaker. And um, uh, I happened to participate. I was invited by my friend from uh, a development partner uh, to observe their training about uh, ready to rebuild, which involves local government units and national agencies. And I asked um, the participation of the Bangsamoro government, and I was informed that very few, uh, I think uh, very few from Basilan uh, have participated in the series of trainings that uh, they have been conducting. In fact, by the end of this month, there's another batch, uh, batch six already, that we need to take advantage because one, once this program is uh, over, we can no longer avail of these uh, initiatives. And that's why we're saying that this is a proactive measure so that when the disaster comes, we have a ready template of uh, recovery and rehabilitation plans ready to be filled out, or ready to be uh, um, finalized once we have this disaster, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, at least we don't have any experience yet, but because uh, our edges are not using a proactive measures and early recovery and uh, rehabilitation, we don't have any experience yet that uh, it gone worse, Mr. Um, Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we take the case of Marawi, Mr. Speaker. Uh, we are not even prepared to rehab and uh, to recover and rehab Marawi. In fact, until today, the uh, rehabilitation, recovery and rehabilitation efforts are being done by the national government because um, this, they, they look at us as we are not capable of, uh, of uh, um, this, the magnitude of the uh, the uh, devastation that happened in Marawi might be uh, might lead to the intervention of the national government, and so I think uh, based on that experience, we really need to to build our own initiatives, our own uh, expertise when uh, uh, disaster would come, uh, Mr. Speaker. Yes, thank you for that response, Mr. S Mr. Speaker. Thank you. MP my Mr. Speaker. The lady from Tugaya is recognized. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to ask the proponent if it's uh, ready to yield to some question. Yes, Mr. Speaker. Uh, you said in the statement that uh, there are proactive measures that should be undertaken, and to, you have mentioned two. Yes, two, Mr. Speaker. Two. So the first one is the participation of the BARM in the program called Ready Rebuild. Yes, Mr. Speaker. It is a training program for LGUs and national agencies and, uh, and national agencies, line agencies of the national government uh, for disaster uh, dis post disaster recovery and rebuild. Rehabil so we are talking about disaster that already happened and the plan for recovery and rebuilding. Yeah. 
Uh, do you think that the ready rebuild program can be replicated? Uh, the training program can be uh, replicated in the barn. Thank you, Matt. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, and thank you very much, MP Mai, for asking that because I want really to explain this. Um, there's an ongoing ready to rebuild program, and in fact, um, I, I joined the uh, BATS 5, and there's an upcoming BATS 6 by the end of this month. And um, um, most of the LGU's participants there, um, be, this is very timely actually because of the UDET, and they prioritize UDET. Uh, uh, municipalities and uh, provinces and uh, agencies to be part of that, but it's still open with national agencies and still open with LGUs, even BARM. So I saw that as an opportunity that BARM should be part of it because we are not spared from any disasters. In fact, we have named all the disasters in this country. We have all those things, no? So if there are LGUs or agencies that should be prepared, it's us, it's the Bangsamoro region. And that's why it's a must for us to participate in that ready to rebuild program. So in that connection, uh, what agency or what ministry do you have in mind to participate in this program? Yeah, um, I think all those agencies under the uh, um, um, rehabilitation uh, cluster under the Dream Sea, and uh, all the agencies, maybe also we can include those uh, um, in the preparedness in the case of uh, DOST. Um, and all the LGUs, it's a must. So the five in fact, provinces. I was informed that only few from Basilan was able to participate. No? Um, and I think through this resolution, if we partner this to OCD and the World Bank, um, they might offer us a special training program for our LGUs and line agencies. So, Mr. Speaker, uh, in accordance with the proponent, there is a possibility that uh, should the resolution pass, we can request from the World Bank and the OCD to provide us a BARM-wide yeah. ready-to-rebuild program. Am I correct? Yes, Mr. Speaker. And then another proactive measure that uh, you have mentioned is a JORISC. JORISC platform. Yes, Mr. Speaker. So are we made to understand that the JORISC platform is not available in the BARM? Um, the JORISC platform is open to all. It's a, a platform that is accessible by uh, internet. You can open it but there is an um, uh, app there that is solely intended for um, partners of the DOST National who could access a particular data and who could provide a particular data. Um, in this case, the reason why I included it here is that when I open the platform, um, it looks like our data from the BARM is not updated. And therefore... My suggestion is that we should have a productive measure by coming up with an agreement with the DOST National to partner with our MOST so that we can populate the data intended for the BARM. Uh, for example, uh, in, in Maguindanao, we are flood prone area. And we need to identify what is specific barangays or situs uh, in using the platform that are um, prone to floods whenever a uh, percentage of this rainfall would uh, happen in, the, in that particular area. So um, an initiative that would uh, actually tie up both the national uh, DOST and the MOST is uh, one very good uh, uh, proactive measure that we can take on so that we have an updated data and uh, all the disasters, we will be informed that uh, uh, whenever there are uh, potential uh, disasters later on, it's provided in the uh, data bank that the DOST National is uh, uh, managing. So uh, right may, may we maybe be clarified, what is the main recommendation? Are we now recommending that there would be a JO risk platform similar 
platform that will be managed by the most? Um, Mr. Speaker, what I'm suggesting is we do partnership with the DOST National. Uh, the, the platform should be maintained by national government. But what can, we can do is our LGUs and the concern line agencies will be uh, trained on the application of the JURIs so that they can use it and provide data, update the data there so that we can use it in the planning purposes for our ready to rebuild uh, programs. So, Mr. Speaker, may we, in the period of amendment, uh, propose amendments that it shall be mandatory for the LGU to, to provide data, to populate the data and update the data yeah. of the platform called JORIS. And in addition, that we amend the resolution to include that this resolution we furnish the World Bank and the OCD, Mr. Speaker. We, we cannot mandate that on a mere resolution. It cannot, we cannot force them to be to make it mandatory. It has to be through a law. The JRS, Mr. Speaker? Because the platform, Mr. Speaker, has already been created by law. There's already a JRS. Unfortunately, we were not able to update all of the data that is contained there because our LGUs are not submitting updated data. So we do not know now, Mr. Speaker, those areas that are prone to climate change and disaster that persist in our land. So maybe we can mandate that our LGUs regularly update the JORX so that if disaster happens, they already know where the place should, uh, the people should go to in case that they need to evacuate. I think we can just uh, recommend that to the implementing agency so that they can mandate the uh, Maybe, local Maybe, Mr. Agencies. Speaker, if I may, it's a directory. So we yeah. direct them yeah. to do this, Mr. Speaker. So I will amend accordingly, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. Mr. Speaker, I move to close the period of interpolation and debate. The period of interpolation and debate is now terminated. Mr. Speaker, I move for the period, uh, to open the period of amendment. The period of amendment is now open. Yeah, Mr. Speaker, before anything else, um, I would like to correct the um, title uh, instead of the word office to be replaced as authority for the BPDA. Any further amendment? Yes, Mr. Speaker. Uh, we would like to amend the title as well, Mr. Speaker. Instead of the word to encourage, we'd like to direct line agencies and local governments in BARM. The, the word encourage, Mr. Speaker. What is the pleasure of the proponent? Um, I think um, it, it's forceful, although... Because encourage, uh, Mr. Speaker, it depends on their discretion if they want to do it or not. But according to the speech that was presented to us, there is an urgency. Considering that disaster, Mr. Speaker, is an uh, occurrence that we cannot foresee in advance. It should not be left at the whims and caprice of... Uh, line agencies, this parliament must do its job of making sure that policies are complied with. So we have to direct them to undertake measures on disaster risk, Mr. Speaker. Um, Mr. Speaker, I, I think uh, there are laws that govern the local government units. Um, although uh, put, by putting the word director, uh, doesn't necessarily mean that uh, we are diminishing the functions of the LGUs. But I think um, I, I, I want to make the resolution friendly to everyone, especially to the ministries and offices, so that uh, um, uh, the implementation of this will be smooth, uh, Mr. Speaker. So that's my intention, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, in the exercise of the oversight power, of the parliament, the parliament as the highest policy making body has to make sure that the laws of the parliament is followed. 
and complied with. So, as the highest policy making body, we should not uh, make uh, uh, like consider them on equal terms. We direct them, not really uh, make words like "I encourage you," because this is a this is a legisl- legal body, a legislative body. A legislative body legislates, direct, oversights, compels action. Otherwise, we cannot change behavior or influence the attitudes of our people and reorder society if we just make use of the word encourage so that we will not offend their sensibilities. Yeah, I I, I fully agree with that. Uh, But if you try to look at the uh, wording of the resolution, it urges the government of the day through a very specific line agencies and these line agencies cannot direct a call line agency in that case mr speaker um but in the case of mlg perhaps they could do that to the line the, to the local government units but in the case of bpda it cannot it cannot just direct another ministry to do that because um there are equal bodies mr speaker and that's why i use a very um, neutral uh, word here so that um, everybody would be encouraged to take part on this initiative, Mr. Speaker. I think the point of MP Bayintan is respect for a co-equal uh, agency of the uh, government of the day. Mr. Speaker, we are not co-equal with the line agencies. because he we- is, She is referring to the MILG, the Bangsamoro, Planning and Development Authority and the MOST. Yeah, we could try to look at the word things. It talks about these three very specific institutions that would work with the line agencies and the, the MILG that would work with the LGUs. Your suggestion might be applicable for the MILG with regards to the LGUs, but the other two uh, agencies will not apply no? yung, yung proposal. Na, it direct ni BPDA si Ministry of uh, Health. It direct ni BPDA si Ministry of uh, MBHC. So, kaya nga, neutral terms yung ginamit, Mr. Speaker. Are we not the, or, uh, directing the line agencies to make come up with their Disaster Risk Recovery and Rehabilitation Plan. I, will... I think with due respect to MP Maisara, the proponent, uh, I think, rejects the amendment. So, yes, Mr. Anyway, Speaker, Mr. Speaker. Uh, precisely because uh, I, I, um, I respect the pillars of uh, the Dream Sea, which is uh, the MILG, uh, the uh, BPDA, and the MOST being the lead of uh, the Dream Sea uh, in the Bangsamoro, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, if we are just encouraging and not directing, uh, the resolution seems to be very weak because there will be uh, no consequence if they do not follow the resolution. Uh, There is no compulsion. There is no necessity. It is left to the discretion of the agencies whether or not they want to pursue disaster risk and rehabilitation. In that case, Mr. Speaker, I withdraw my... Uh, amendment uh, for the fact that as a, as, a, as a legislator, I really make sure that our laws will be complied with and that we, as the highest policy-making body, uh, will not leave the discretion to implement One minute, laws, yeah. Mr. Speaker, to the agencies. One minute suspension.
session resumes. Uh, I, uh, the the status is that the the lady from Tugaya is withdrawing his proposed amendment to the title. So we take note of that, Secretariat. Uh, you may proceed. Uh, yes, Mr. MP, Speaker, I uh, would like to make an amendment on the latter part. In the uh, last uh, where, uh, uh, dispositive portion, to furnish the copies of the approved resolution to World Bank and OCD for a request for ready rebuild program, training program in the bank Samoro. That's hey, Secretariat, uh, please take note. This will be written in style. Yes, yes, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. We will help in the style. Mr. Speaker, I move to close the period of amendment. The period of amendment is now terminated. Close. Mr. Mr. Speaker, I move for the approval and adoption of this particular resolution. There's a motion to uh, approve proposed resolution number 632 subject to style. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Is, is there any objection? There being none, proposed resolution number 632 is approved subject to style. One minute suspension. Session resumes. Yes, Mr. Speaker, we continue. We are on PR number 636. Mr. Speaker, I have an omnibus motion to dispense with the period of uh, interpolation and debate in the period of amendment. And I further move for the approval of this particular resolution, PR number 632. There's, Mr. Speaker. there's a motion, there's an omnibus motion to dispense the period of interpolation and debate and the period of amendment and the further motion that we approve proposed resolution number 636 subject. There being no objection, uh, proposed resolution number 636 is uh, approved subject to style. Yes, Mr. Speaker, we are on PR number 637. We have, I have an omnibus motion to dispense with the period of interpolation in debate and an amendment that I further move for the approval of this service. Uh, okay. An omnibus motion for the, uh, this, to dispense with the period of interpolation debate and the period of amendment and the further motion that uh, we approve proposed resolution number 637. There any second? Uh, Proposed resolution number 637 is approved subject to style. Mr. Speaker, there being no other agenda on order of business, I move to adjourn this session until tomorrow at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. There is a, a, mo a session is uh, adjourned until tomorrow at 1 o'clock p.m.